Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, which looks in it. And it was from a, a woman who had a little four-year-old boy named Christopher. And she heard uh, sniffling. Oh, uh, Big Bird was in a scene where he was the only child around. And so he was very sorry for himself because all the kids had gone off to school and he was too young. And so uh, she hears Christopher watching the show. And she was busy in the kitchen. She hears a little sniffling and crying. And she goes, what's wrong, Christopher? He said, Big Bird is just like me. He's all alone all day because the kids, his older brothers and sisters, were after school. And so he saw very sad, and I lower his eyes, and, and uh, he can look very unhappy. Or if you tip him forward, his mouth goes up. It really doesn't, it's, it's a stiff mouth. It doesn't uh, change like a porpoise. You can't change his expression. Porpoises always look like they're rather pleased. <laughs> And uh, so, but by aiming at them at the camera in this way or that, the puppeteer learns to, to, uh, stop. I don't, I didn't think I was doing a very good job. And if you're having trouble with that thing, listen, there's a little tiny bell. And if you hear that bell, just open the, the mouth and it will be just right. When we started, you know, uh, Jim uh, told me he wanted me to play two characters when he described the bird. And the bird initially was going to be just a silly, goofy bird. And the other was Oscar the Grouch didn't know what I was going to use for the voice. It was getting down to the nitty gritty. Yes, I have a question. What is it, Oscar? Uh, what is the capital of uh, South Dakota? I had to go across town in a cab. So I hailed a cab and got in. The guy says, we're too Mac. And so I said, wow, what a great voice. He had a cigar on one side of his mouth and a voice came out the other like this. And I said, that's perfect. So when I got out of the cab, I kept saying, we're too Mac, we're too Mac, because I'm trying to learn to do this voice that I could imitate that very well. It really sounded a lot like that. I had never tried that. I swear if I hadn't looked at him seeing him talking out of the corner of his mouth in, the, in his rearview mirror because I'm sitting over. And uh, so I got Oscar's voice that way. Bye, Oscar. What? What? That's the nicest thing you've ever said to me. When I do Big Bird, it's, it's a lot of fun. And Oscar is too, because it's a totally different experience. After often doing a, a bird all day long, I'll uh, know I've got a few more scenes at the end in there with Oscar. That's and it's almost therapeutic. No. Because I've been sweet and nice all day, and now Oscar is, can be one of the most negative containers characters on television, even though he's on a children's show. And uh, so it's a lot of fun. I've never played a character like that. I call it by. If you remember Happy Days, and you remember the fawns, well, Oscar's my fawns. He's cool. Hey, you and me, Skinny. The one great thing about television is we're looking, we're, we, we don't look at the puppet. We're looking down at the monitor while we are manipulating the puppet. Everyone has only one eye. It's the camera's lens. If I turn this way, his mouth looks like he's very sad, and I lower his eyes, and, and um, he can look very unhappy. Or if you tip him forward, his mouth goes up. It really does. Television came around. I would like to get into television as a puppeteer, and I did. Uh, only eight years after television began, I had my own puppet show called the Rascal Rabbit Show in Las Vegas. Paid ten dollars a week, and I uh, I knew it was just a beginning. I think it was probably a terrible show. I didn't even have a monitor. I couldn't see what I was doing. So uh, eventually, I kept doing puppets, and I got um, that was in '55. I was in the military, got shipped out, so I lost that show. And in 60, I got back into TV in Boston. Jim Henson was scouting for somebody to play Big Bird and Oscar. He saw me doing my show, came backstage, and said, would you like to join me? I thought that was sort of like, uh, I knew who Jim Henson was. The Muppets weren't big by any means at that time, but I saw them a lot in Sullivan and other shows. And so it was, though, if I was a drummer, some fellow came along and said, we got a little band from Liverpool. Would you like to be me drummer then? You know, because to me, if the, if there's a Beatles in the puppet world, it was it was the Muppets. Jim Henson was uh, very humble himself, uh, very interested in other people, and I never saw him angry. I'd see him upset, but he never reacted against anyone. And one day, when I, in the early days of the show, I, I wasn't as disciplined as he and Frank Oz were doing, and we were doing the first scenes of Sesame Street. Little scenes were with the anything Muppets, where they could put different eyes, different things, make a little kid or a dragon. And I kept missing the opening note with the lip sync. And I'd, oh, I'd miss, they'd say, so everyone likes ice cream, you know, 
It's one of my problems. And uh, uh, so we were watching playbacks, and the third time I had still done it wrong. I missed that note. And Jim, uh, a lot of people crowd around. One of the monitors watched the playback. And so he saw an empty one over on the other side. Uh, he walked over to so look at that himself, and he didn't see me walk up behind him. And I heard him quietly say, garbage, garbage. And it went a, like a knife through me. I said, oh, God. I said, Jim, I'm sorry. I'm going to resign. I'm not good enough to be a Muppeteer. And he turned around and turned right beat right. He said, oh, I wasn't talking about you. He lied. He said, I was, I, my work is not to stuff today. I, I don't, I didn't think I was doing a very good job. And if you're having trouble with that thing, listen, there's a little tiny bell. And if you hear that bell, just open the, the mouth and it will be just right. When we started, you know, uh, Jim uh, told me he wanted me to play two characters. One, he described the bird, and the bird initially was going to be just a silly, goofy bird. And the other was Oscar the Grouch. He didn't know what I was going to use for the voice. It was getting down to the nitty-gritty. Yes, I have a question. What is it, Oscar? Uh, what is the capital of South Dakota? I had to go across town in a cab. So I hailed a cab and got in. The guy says, we're two, Mac. And so I said, well, what a great voice. He had a cigar on one side of his mouth, and a voice came out the other, like this. And I said, that's perfect. So when I got out of the cab, I kept saying, we're two back, we're two back, because I'm trying to learn to do this voice. But I...